All right. So we are going to talk about software defined networking, SDN, thing that you have been waiting for. So REST we have already talked about. REST is this web style interface, right? And the web style interface was done by a PhD thesis by Raya Fielding. And he studied many ways to interface things and he found that the web is the right way to do it. Web was already there. But he says that we should design everything like they have done for the web. So in the web, basically, these are the things which are done, is that um, client and servers are there. The server is stateless. Server talks to thousands of clients, so it doesn't keep anything. All right, clients keep all the state. And the advantage of that is it becomes scalable. Now you can serve millions of clients and not worry about running out of space. And the responses can be cached for a specified time, just like in the web. And the intermediate service proxies can respond. So all of these things he took from the web, and he says that every application should do this. So that is called REST, representational state transfer. There are only four instructions, create, read, update, and delete, CRUD, four operations. And in terms of web, we use them get, post, put, and delete. So if you write HTML, HTML, no, HTTP. If you write HTTP, which we again see, teach in 473, very first thing, very first day, HTTP, you know that there's a get, post, put, and delete. For any web page, you can do that. You can get the web page, you can write the web page, you can post into your form and all that. So that is what we should do with every application. So when you design an application which uses these commands, we call it REST API. Okay, and I will continue this next time because we run out of time. But basically, you use the URL, right? You can say get this controller, this model, this and that, you know, and you can get that. Okay, everything becomes like a web page. And then you should be able to get what um, and use the four instructions which are actually on this slide. So we should be able to do get, post, put, and delete. And then um, everything is a URI. And so if you wanted to receive, if you wanted to reach, let's say, a controller, then you would say, as shown in the fourth line here, uh, get HTTP colon slash slash the locator in odct.org, which we call SQDN, fully qualified domain name, followed by the directory rest, followed by the direct subdirectory D1, followed by subdirectory Z, and so on and so forth, all the various controller nodes. That basically is the controller and it appears like a page to everyone. And so um, that is what RESTful API is, basically using the web HTTP method for um, all objects. Um, and um, of course, uh, new data types have been defined, such as controller mode, firewall rules, and topology configuration, everything that you need to access, then you need to know how to interpret those. And um, and that can be even hardware, um, such as um, a, a software, virtual switch, a real switch. Now, um, one of the things that they did forget in REST, and that is public subscribe. So, and they forget that, they forgot that even in HTTP. In HTTP, even though it is basically basic means to publish, the designers really didn't want to take the responsibility of telling the subscriber that new page is available. So right now you cannot really do by using HTTP and you cannot tell a page, oh, please tell me when you change. And so the only way is that you refresh, refresh, and refresh all the time to figure out if something has changed. And that actually is a negative for RESTful. And so some people, when they use RESTful, they extend it to include public subscribe mechanism. OSGI um, is originally stood for Open Service Gateway Initiative. And um, what they wanted to do was they wanted to have services which anybody could use. And so they had to come up with a mechanism so that people could register their services and other people could discover those services. And um, so as shown here, they have a, they have a view here which shows um, that you you have a native operating system on which you run a Java virtual machine, 
and then all the way up you will have some modules and so on and so forth all the way to the services and there is security so so basically um this whole thing is called a bundle and each bundle offers some services and uses other services so you know, one of the things is that here and this is kind of new is that you could really do not only you could you could register your service but you could also say well i want this service and if the service doesn't exist right now you could say well i want to listen to this listen to this thing so when the service comes up then they will usually inform that or oh, the service is available now so on the right picture that you see there is a listen for on the bottom that is something new is that um, with the service registry bundle b says i need um, this service whatever service it needs and it will tell the parameters and those parameters don't need anybody right now so it will just wait until that service is available actually then it will wait it could do something else and when that service is available then it will be informed so the bundles can be installed started stop updated or uninstalled so basically there is a life cycle api there which allows you to do these things for any of the services and um, each module defines what is the what is it that the bundle is exporting and importing security layer as, as usual handles the security part execution def environment defines what methods and classes are available in a specific platform and the bundle can get the service or can listen for the service we already talked most of it the service has properties that allows others to select among multiple bundles offering the same service so that's the part is that you specify the services and you say well i need this service which should have these parameters and um, and there may be many services which may have the same parameters and you will get access or you can narrow it down i mean you can narrow it down yourself or you can specify more parameters and then you you can you will get a narrow set so the services are dynamic and um, so it can be taken out any time and then when it is taken out other bundles will stop using it so basically the bundles can be installed and uninstalled on the fly so that's the thing is that these things are designed so that when something is not available you know how to handle that next part either you try to get another service or you you are try to live without that service okay just like we did right now um we we had uh, internet service on two computers and we don't have on one so we are living with one okay i mean that is the kind of thing we do in the real life same thing you can do in the os yeah same open daylight so basically while the open networking forum was going along and there were so many different uh, controllers going along um the problem was that they were in some sense you no know, even though they were called open they were closed to new innovation you also new innovation is if, if you suggested some other protocol then they would say no that's not the right thing to do you should just use one south bound protocol and so the industry went along and had have a new project called open daylight and the name obviously came from the flood light which was the standard at the time industry standard at the time and so and and they really wanted to make it totally open so in the sense so basically it's we are taking it from one company and developing that whole thing now it's a multi company collaboration and it's not an open networking foundation it is under linux foundation so it's a multi in a company collaboration and so this controller is being developed and i have given it the name no open flow just similar to the no sql which doesn't mean that no open flow it means not only open flow remember that not only open flow so basically the idea here is that there you could have as much variety as you want and uh, it's not just limited to the stick to one protocol so it supports multiple cloud bound protocols by a plugin and then there is a software abstraction layer and actually we have seen this picture before the software software abstraction layer that you you give it some what common code common instruction and that figures out how to reach that particular box which is speak only particular language so that figures out how to fulfill the service requested by the higher layer so now here is thing now if you had only one protocol and you had only one controller then you didn't really need that Well, is the one that really is what it is doing is it is virtualizing all these different protocols into one. All right, and then 
the whole thing is being done using OSGI framework, and that's why I talked about OSGI framework, and it uses RESTful API. That's why I talked about RESTful API. And um, so basically, uh, all these different services can be accessed inside a SDN controller. There are different modules that are written by different people, and uh, they advertise their services, and then the services are used um, basically by each other. Okay. So this daylight controller is the latest thing that is happening in the industry, and um, and uh, it's it's a truly um, multi-company collaboration because the code is coming from many different companies that we'll see in the next few slides. So in terms of applications, um, if you go to the Open Daylight um, web page, you will find which was in the next previous slide on the bottom there is a main page URL. If you go to the web page. Then you will find um, many uh, many different uh, modules that are being developed, and I have put a list here. First of all, in the case of applications, they have network virtualization application and virtual tenant network. Um, so um, the the basically the I first had actually single slide on each of these, but then um, because they're running out of time in this course, uh, I left it for you guys to read the details. Um, I am going to just basically tell you a brief favor of what these things do. Um, and uh, some of them in some sense also overlap because the ideas have been proposed by by different uh, companies and different people. So the virtual tenant network VTN simply allows a tenant to manage its part of the network. And um, virtual network virtualization, uh, open daylight virtual network virtualization is somewhat similar. It allows the provider to slice the network. Then uh, the defense for all handles the security part of it. The NAV bound API rest, rest we already talked about, and there's a module for that. Glux is another one. So it is, it is spelled as B L U X, but pronounced as it was B E L U X, Glux. And it is another NAV bound API, which uses Angular JS. Which is um, an extension of HTML by Google. I actually don't know much about AngularJS, but this must be a really good API so that it is competing with REST. All right. Then, um, southbound APIs, uh, it allows open flow plugin, the whole library, protocol library of 1.0, 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, .1, and so on and so forth. It has modules for LISP, which is the Cisco Locator ID Separation Protocol Mapping Service. It has SNMP, and SNMP is kind of universally spoken right now. It's not that fast, actually, but um, at least uh, if you have an old equipment, you can program it using SNMP. Then it also has a BGP link state PCE, Path Control Element uh, Protocol. So you, you can also speak BGP to many of the routers, existing routers. For overlay, it uses um, uh, Go, Open distributed overlay virtual Ethernet, which is very similar to VXLAN, but but it does not use IP multicast. Now the thing is, it does not mean that you cannot use VXLAN with uh, open daylight. VXLAN probably already exists, um, and uh, so you know VXLAN overlay can be used. But the Zoe was contributed by some, some company, and I think it was IBM, which contributed, so it is listed here. And then in terms of configuring the thing, you can configure it using NetCon. This is the IETF protocol for configuration, and the, that uses Yang tools. Again, um, and these are the something that I would have loved to go through the whole detail, and I have a whole, actually, NetCon is a one-hour lecture, and I have a whole one-hour lecture, which unfortunately we cannot do this time. But um, what it is is that the net configuration, NetCon is a very generic method of configuring any network device. And Yang actually is not an acronym, even though it is written in full, um, full Y A N G. It is not a Yang. Yang is basically Yin and Yang. You know, we all know in Chinese, Yin and Yang is basically the opposite. Both of them could be true. So, so the so this basically Yang is the bad Yang actually. And um, and there is a Yin, which is the language, and Yang is the tool. And so. Uh, I, I, and I don't really know the story behind why the names got there, but basically Yang, Yang is a model that is used for um, describing uh, your device. Again, the whole uh, whole lecture, we might, 
I, I don't know, maybe we will have to make some mistakes some other time. But anyway, so that is uh, that is there in in Open Day Live. Then open data, open D switch database that we talked about before when we talked about D switch. We, we said that we control the D switch, you use this database. So that is there. And then finally, there is one thing called affinity metadata service, which I'm going to describe in the next slide. Now, here's the thing this is the list today. And the list changes very fast because this is a very dynamic project. And uh, the whole industry is trying to put their effort into it, and they're, they're trying to get their piece into it. So the list of pieces is changing very much. And um, so, uh, so even though I took this list last week, maybe the list might have been changed by today. But the idea is, uh, this is the protocol, this is the controller that you want to use if you want to do something today. Okay. And of course, everything is open source. You can download the code from uh, Open Day Live. Um, all right, Affinity. So now, Affinity is an idea of another uh, startup company, uh, or maybe it's not a startup anymore. I don't know. But basically, this is an idea where they, their idea is that you should be able to describe, as the network men, or people who want to use the network, should be able to describe their requirements without really worrying about routers and things like that. For example, you should be able to say that I need three web servers and the capacity should be one gigabit and that, you know, whatever different things you want to say about the network. So you should be able to create an abstract topology, okay, an implementation independent description of the infrastructure that you need. So basically, you don't need to worry about what is the physical infrastructure. Obviously, that is the whole purpose of virtualization. But also, um, you um, you should be able to describe that so that the, somebody can take your description and put it on their virtual infrastructure. So it allows the intent to be specified in application and service terms, independent of where and how the workload attached to the network. So the SDN controllers can use the information to automatically provision the DMs and the network for the user, right? So the users don't need to know about the bridges, routers, VLANs, tunnels. They can't, they really don't know, and they don't worry about all any of that, right? So that's a nice idea, and but uh, I don't know how it is going right now. Right now, it is a company-specific um, project. Uh, it is part of Open Day Live, but there is one company that has proposed it. So it is under the proposal stage, and, um, and basically, it, it, it might get through. Okay. What is being done for the East-West um, API for the multi-controller network? That's a good question because um, while I know that one of the things that was done was in Onyx, when we discussed Onyx, Onyx had um, was designed so that it was you, you could have multiple controllers, and if you go back to the Onyx slide, you will find that there was one module which talked to the next door neighbor uh, controller, and uh, so that one actually is designed. In this picture here, um, it would be very easy. See, that's the thing is that every layer, even though I may have seen you know, you only one layer that says controller. Actually, controller is modular. So there are many modules in the controller. And I, if I were to read that picture, I would have drawn, you know, controller similar to what we have seen in the protocol plugin. There are controller plugins. And you could very easily have a controller plugin that would synchronize the database with the next door neighbor. And uh, so, yes, um, and people are thinking about it, and um, maybe that did not get into the picture that is currently on in Open Daylight website. Okay. So the summary, five, four key points. First is that SDN is, we talked about what is SDN. And, um, and I just wanted to make sure that people understood that SDN is not a protocol. SDN is not a mechanism. SDN is a framework so that you can do lots of things. You can manage a lot of things in a very short, quick method. And that can be done in many different ways. And so basically, um, that is the general definition of SDN now. All right, now having said that, is that universally accepted? No. I mean, I'm in a conference here today where they're talking about SDN and MSB, and I see some leading people from leading companies 
talking about you know what is SDN, and then you still you know some people are three years behind, some people are three years behind, and so on and so forth. So you can be as much behind as you like. But current definition is that um, basically you should be able to use any protocol. Second thing is open flow original SDN with now many different southbound, northbound APIs and intermediate services and being discussed and being implemented. And so as you can see, XMPP has clearly been implemented. Courses, PCE, Alto, they are all being done in the open daylight. So open daylight is the controller platform, which is the current platform which is being done under Linux Foundation. And um, it uses REST APIs and OSGI framework for modularity. So basically, because of the OSGI framework, you can really put any module on any layer that we talked about you know, before. And that was the thing is that there is no single layer which is single module. Okay? If you wanted a controller, you just ask for a controller function, and uh, you will get the controller of the kind that you need to work with. All right, in terms of reading list, um, now you will notice that I have um, basically this book on the top, SDN, which is a Safari book. And actually most of the books that I have recommended in this course are Safari books, so you can go ahead and read them. But this is a book that tells you the current industry standard. And then uh, I have the references on um, the things that we talked about, Alto, um, and then OSGI, and PCE, some of these things, okay? And so, Go ahead and read. Um, Wikipedia is a little bit behind on this. Uh, I was really surprised that um, among all of these things, only thing I could find was one page on software defined networking. Um, but then, you know, you can read good, good things about REST, OSGI, XMPC, and PCE here. Okay. Then uh, the rest of the things I have put here are the references that you can, if you need to know more about these things, then you can go to Open Daylight website, for example, and for each of the tools that we have talked about, there is a whole set of pages or wikis because uh, people contribute the code, discuss the code, discuss the proposal. So all of that detail is here in the reference thing. 